Hello everyone! I am Paige Severe if you're new to my feed and I'm a natural makeup specialist for women over 30 and I am going to teach you about the Demi method, Demi makeup tutorial. I'm going to do a full face of Demi today. If you're like, what the heck is Demi? I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, so there's two main lines that I share about on my feed. They are both cream based. They both come from the same company. One is called 3D Foundation. Okay, so this is like what the 3D looks like. So you've got contour, bronzer, foundation, concealer, lip and cheek colors, all the things, okay? And then the other line that I love to use is called the Demi Correctors, okay? And I kind of use them interchangeably, but basically <laughs> Demi replaces foundation. So instead of putting foundation all over my face, like I love to do the Demi method when I just want something very light, soft, and natural. It's also sheer, um, meaning it doesn't have like this added makeup texture that you can sometimes get with foundations and just, you know, creating more of like makeup coverage, right? So step one with Demi, if you're familiar with Demi or if you watch any of my Demi tutorials, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to even your face, okay? We're gonna even out the tone. So think about like when you do a self tanner, you just like love how you look because your skin just looks more even, it hides some of your imperfections. So that's essentially what we're doing with this first step with Demi, okay? And I will kind of probably answer a lot of your questions as I go along, all right? So the first step is to add a little bronzer. I'm using a cream bronzer called Bella, all right? And you wanna just use a little bit, you're not, applying a whole lot. You don't want it to look like a heavy bronzer on your face. Um, someone said, I truly love my Demi products. Once I got the hang of it, it became so easy. Love how I photograph now too. Oh yes, that's the best. Oh my gosh. It's seriously amazing. Okay. So I'm only adding a little bronzer to the lighter areas on my face. This is the key. I'm not doing it all over my entire face. So we are just balancing light and dark. And I know this is so like not what most people are used to when it comes to makeup, but I'm telling you, it is such a wild method and it really does wonders. So in the larger areas, I'm just using the large side of the shape brush. So, and I like to do this just, I'm just sitting in my bathtub in front of my window and it really just allows me to see kind of where those lighter spots are on my face. My jawline tends to be much lighter than this kind of center part of my face where I have a little bit more pigment. And it is, it's truly amazing you guys. When you balance that light and dark, you just realize, wow, I don't have as much to cover as I think I do. <laughs> okay, does Demi stay very well? Yes, it stays all day. In fact, I think it stays better than any <laughs> product. I mean, 3D foundation stays amazing, but like it is truly like does not budge because you are using such a small amount and you're using it in the right places. I don't know how that science magic works, but it does. It stays amazingly well and you can always set it with a setting spray too if you want to help with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a smaller brush. This is the spot brush. Mine are just black. They don't offer black on the site, but they sent artist black ones. So I'm taking the large end of the spot brush. I'm going in with that same bronzer shade. And now I'm just going to add a little dark to the lighter areas underneath my eyes. So for the smaller areas, you want to use a smaller brush. Oh, I think what she meant to say was, what does Demi stand for? It doesn't stand for anything. That's just what the name of the product and the name of the method is called. If you think about like a Demi color in your hair, it's um, more sheer. I don't know, that's just the name that it's called. <laughs> okay, and then I just kind of like to do a little nose contour with my bronzer shade, just a tiny bit. Okay, so you obviously don't have dark circles on your eyes. Got it. Lucky you. I love how everyone says this to me. It's hilarious. Um, 
yeah, I probably don't have as much darkness as maybe some other people do, but that doesn't mean this method can't work for you. You definitely need to go watch the reel I just posted today. I shared an amazing before and after of someone with darker circles. If you understand color science, you understand that opposite colors neutralize, you will understand that Demi can work for anyone. And yes, this is in place of foundation. So if you don't like to wear foundation or if you just want like something, you know, to neutralize underneath your eyes, this is a really great method for you. And the key is really just, again, balancing the light and dark first. That is the first thing you do because then you'll realize, you'll see like where the actual darkness is on your face and what needs to be lightened. So we're always starting with the dark first. Someone said, I have very dark circles and it balances my under eyes very well. Isn't it crazy? Here's the crazy thing, you guys. I see selfies every single day and the number one thing people tell me is, oh, my dark circles are so bad. And you know what? They're really not. You know what makes your dark circles look darker than they actually are? The light contrasting around it. And once you balance that contrast of light and dark, you realize, oh my gosh, my dark circles are really not as bad as I thought they were. And that is what is so cool about this method. So instead of just using like a beige tone concealer all underneath your eyes, oh, hold on. <laughs> you're balancing everything. So I'm using a shade called Bella Bronzer for those who are just hopping on. Um, yeah, you're not covering the darkness necessarily, you're balancing it. And then the leftover excess dark points we're going to neutralize. And we'll do that here in just a little bit. I'm just kind of, I need to look at my mirror because I can't quite see as well on my camera. So any just kind of little white spots or lighter spots on your face, you definitely don't want to add bronzer to darker spots. Like if you have melasma, this is actually such a great technique for someone with melasma and it's what I teach anyone with melasma to do. Your melasma is most distracting because it's so much darker than the rest of your face. And I'm not saying your whole face needs to be like five shades darker than the rest of your body, but if you just kind of balance and meet in the middle of that color, it becomes much less distracting and you just realize you don't have as much to conceal like it seems like you do, again, because of that contrast. Okay, it's looking pretty good where I want it. Now at this point, okay, you can go in and you can add a contour shade. Um, you could use the 3D contours if you want. You don't have to. Sometimes I like to just add a little bit of definition underneath my cheekbone. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my 3D contour, Astoria, and I'm just barely, barely, tapping it underneath my cheekbones. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more depth around my forehead here. Okay. And you can even just do the same thing with the bronzer. You could just pack on a little bit more bronzer kind of in your contour areas to create a little bit more of that depth. Someone asked, how do you decide which part you need to balance dark and light? You really just gotta look at your face and you gotta decide, okay, is this lighter or darker? <laughs> and then you just kind of play around with it. Like I said, sitting in a window where there's natural light, it really shows you kind of where those light pockets are next to the dark pockets. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so we've got a little, little contour on. All right, so step one was balancing light and dark with bronzer. Step two, add a little definition with bronzer or contour if you want. Step three, is to add your blush, right? So we're not correcting anything yet. That is the very last step with Demi. You do not do any of your correctors till the very end. So I am going to take a little blush. I'm using a Demi shade called RV7, which is very similar to Black Cherry. I got a little heavy handed on that. I'm just using the other side of the, what's it called? <laughs> shape brush. Actually, I think I need the blush and bronzer brush because I got a little too much. <laughs> I can't get over your brows. I love how natural yet fluffy there. I do have them microbladed. I got them microbladed though back in 2019 and I never got them refilled and they just like stayed shockingly well. <laughs> I'm like, I might have them for the rest of my life because my skin just like sucked up that microblading so well. Okay, so I like a really blushy cheek. You certainly don't have to do this. 
And someone who naturally has a lot of flush or redness in their face, you guys, it's beautiful. Like use your natural redness as a blush. And if it's looking a little patchy, all you gotta do is you can take the spot brush or just a smaller brush, tap it into your blush shade and just kind of fill in where that natural redness is kind of splotchy. And then just create, use your natural flush as blush. And then we can go in at the end and we can spot treat the darkest points within the redness. And that's oftentimes what makes redness most distracting is the darkness within it. So again, this is very much like a very skin, natural, beautiful look. So now at this point, step four. So we've done bronzing or balancing light and dark, contour, blush. Now we are going to go in and we are going to correct the darkest points on the face. So acne, dark spots, bag line, that kind of stuff. And we are going to use just a few Demi Corrector shades and these are shades that almost everyone is going to use. If you are in the light to medium skin tone range, you will use the exact same shades I'm using right now. So the first shade is called Y01, which is yellow orange one. And the reason why we're using a yellow orange one is because redness on the skin, believe it or not, is not actually redness. So you don't want a green. <laughs> you, redness on the skin 99% of the time is actually excess purple and blue. So if you have a lot of redness all over your face, start by adding color with the bronzer first, then you know balancing a little bit of that, you can use a yellow base bronzer called Palm Bronzer to tone just all over. If you have like big patches of redness, that's a really great way to just kind of tone everything down. And then go in on the darkest points of the redness and you're gonna use a yellow orange one and you're just gonna tap that yellow orange one on the red points, okay? Same thing goes for acne. Oftentimes when acne is more fresh, it looks red, right? Kind of angry. Um, my scars, my acne scars also tend to stay pretty red. So I'm almost always using yellow orange one on my little acne spots. And honestly, you just use the tiniest bit. I'm actually probably using too much. <laughs> it's tricky. It's really tricky. Most people will way overuse these products. They treat them like a foundation. And then they're like, it's way too light. It's not working for me. And it's because it's not supposed to be slathered on like a foundation. You're really just supposed to take these tiny little dots. I'll even just take like a microfiber towel and kind of clean off my brush or back of my hand or whatever so that I can ensure I'm not picking up too much product. So I like to just kind of tap on this corrector on the little tiny spots that need it. You want to just get as close to these little spots as possible. Try not to go outside the line of the, the dark spot. I like to let it just kind of sit on my skin and warm up and then I will just really lightly tap away the excess that is left on the skin. And when you do it right, it's pretty magical. Those little spots just start to disappear and it doesn't leave a layer of texture like foundation can, especially on like acne, right? Because we are just targeting that excess color and making it disappear with color science. It's pretty wild. Do you guys already see like how much smoother my skin looks just by doing that little step? Okay, then a lot of times we have like darker spots that are kind of shadowy, like faded acne oftentimes can look like this. So like kind of see around my mouth right here, it's not quite as red or vibrant, but it's dark and it's more distracting. So in that case, we're gonna use an orange three. Again, almost every single person I color match if you're in the light to medium range, you're gonna be, you're gonna need Y01 and O3. If you're in the deeper range, you're gonna need OY1, so it has more orange than yellow, and then either O3 or O5. So same thing, just a deeper saturation level, just a deeper color. But because it's color science, pretty much everyone's gonna be using the same colors, all right? So I'm gonna take a little O3 
on this darker shadowy area. Sometimes I like to mix my Y01 in with my O3 to get a little bit more orange, but also have a little bit of yellow. Gosh, a little too much. And just kind of tap. Okay, and I know a lot of people when they see this are like, oh my gosh, I have so many spots on my face. I'm gonna be doing this for 20 hours. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> when you do the steps in the right order and you do correcting last, you will realize you have far less to correct than you think you do. So don't let that stop you from trying this method. All right, so now let's kind of move on to our under eye area. Honestly, adding that bronzer balanced my under eyes already so much. Like I really don't have a whole lot to do. So what I'm gonna do is I just kind of like to move my head and see where, okay, that little like pockets of darkness are. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that Y01 when your creams are really warm, like mine are right now, it's easy to pick up too much product. So just be careful of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna do just a little bit of that. I'm using a color, I like to use a color called a neutral yellow minus one. It is a limited edition color. I don't know how long we'll have it for, but I do love it for just that little dark purple pocket right here in my eyes. Like, look at how much better that already looks. Okay, and then, I'm just gonna wipe off my brush here. In this little hollow bag line area, whatever you wanna call it, hold on, I'm gonna fix this tiny little blemish up in my brow here first, so don't forget. Okay, now we're gonna do this O3. So all I've used are these two colors for correcting. So we're going to take O3 and again I just kind of angle my head. I kind of see where that dark, do you see that dark shadow right there? Okay so that has a little bit more blue. It's a little darker. It's not as vibrant. If something isn't vibrant or brighter that means it has more blue in it so that means you need an orange. If it's brighter like a red or really purpley that means you need more yellow, okay? So I just tapped a little O3 in that kind of dark pocket. Do you guys see that difference already? Just the tiniest little bit of orange right there. And I've got this kind of vein guy coming right here. Tap that on and then just tap away the excess. Again, we're not using this like a concealer. A lot of people will get demi and they just swipe it underneath their eye like it's concealer. You really need to just only target the right colors in the right places and balance it like so. Okay, then one other thing I like to do is I like to kind of brighten this little section right here. And a lot of times, most of us, we, we get sun damage, right? And we get kind of this muddy look underneath our eyes. It almost looks kind of dirty or can look kind of freckly a little bit. Um, and so anything that looks muddy or dirty, that means that it has a little green in it. So a green and blue. So this is where I like to use a red orange to brighten. So I'm gonna use a red orange one. If you're deeper, you can use red orange three. And I just kind of add my creams are so warm right now. I don't know why, but it's just picking up a ton of product. Maybe my hands are sweating and making my <laughs> compact really warm. But I just add a little tiny tap of red orange just on that outer corner of the eyes. And it just, I don't know, it's just magical. It just creates this beautiful like brightness there, this nice little lift around the eyes. A lot of us tend to get like this muddy green right here in this section because of sun damage. And again, you just wanna use the tiniest bit because it is lighter, because red is, is lighter. You just kind of tap that around. And then again, I would just kind of like move my head around. Okay, are there any other little dark spots 
that I want to work on. Usually this little line. And what's so cool about this is our under eyes can change from day to day, depending on our diet, depending on how we slept, right? And so a lot of times those shadows or the darkness can move around. And so that's what's so cool about this. If you understand that darkness is almost always blue or purple and blue, you're always gonna use a yellow orange or orange yellow or just a straight orange. And then again, that muddy green look, that means you just need a red orange. So it's really not as complicated as it seems. Like I said, most people are gonna use the same colors to correct, right? And then like if you get a lot of kind of redness, broken capillaries, broken capillaries are usually excess purple and blue. So you're gonna use a yellow orange or an orange yellow, depending on the tone of your skin to get rid of those broken capillaries. And then I've got like some little scars on the side of my nose. So I'm just gonna take a little O3, kind of dot away those little scars, just brighten them up so much better. Okay, and then what I love to do is I like to just take a darker contour color. This is actually a sculpt color. It's also limited edition, but I love this color. It's called NB plus one. And I just do like a quick eyeshadow with it. You can also just use your bronzer, honestly, but it's so easy and it just immediately adds this like beautiful definition to the eye. Can I use this method using my all-in-one palette? I'm not sure what you mean. This palette? Yes. <laughs> they can, it can go in with your 3D colors too. Okay, but I love, what I love about this is you know how a lot of us get kind of like this purpley red underneath our eyes and people hate it and I love it. I actually think it's so pretty. And so this color is a neutral violet. And so it just kind of deepens that like purpley tone and I think it just is so pretty and it just looks so natural. Like you just have this full lower lash line. Someone said, do you like O3 better than mango for really dark circles? Here's the thing. If you're using Demi, you cannot use it with 3D foundation. So if you're doing under eyes with Demi, you've got to do the whole bit. You've got to balance with the bronzer. You've got to, um, you know, balance the purple blue and the blues with just the demi colors. You can't use the 3D because 3D is um, more opaque. And so these will just melt in with the 3D and just mix together. So it's, it's one or the other. So if you're doing foundation, yes, I love mango if you're in the light to medium range. 